Alan Monkinson was a really interesting character. Um, it's hard to sum her up in a brief sentence. She started life out in the um, working class areas of Manchester. Um, she was a scholar right throughout her school years, getting um, scholarships, ending up at university, um, getting a master's. She was so one of the very rare occasions in which working class women at that time got to higher education. So she was a trailblazer in that. While she was at school, she joined the Independent Labour Party and from that point onward, she was a socialist for the rest of her life. She campaigned for women's suffrage. So the first job that she had after university was as an organiser for the National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies um, and she was based in Manchester. The war broke out shortly after that. She became a trade union organiser um, and organised a series of equal pay strikes during the First World War. Um, she then went on, went on in 1924 to become an MP for the Labour Party um, and held a seat in Middlesbrough East from that point until 1931. She was then elected in 1935 in Jarrow and held that seat until 1947 when she died. Uh, she entered the um, government uh, as a um, parliamentary secretary to the Home Office in 1940 and was Minister of Education in 1947. Um, so that's a whistle-stop tour of what she did. She did loads of other things, interesting things, perhaps much more interesting things than that. Um, in her life and uh, hopefully the play will explore some of those some of those aspects of her life so she met lenin and trotsky and gandhi she was a, a close personal friend of nehru um, she knew the um, prime minister of, of, of spain during the spanish civil war Negrán, um, and um, caballero so a really really interesting character Ellen Wilkinson has a very strong connection to the North East. Um, so when she stood in Middlesbrough East, she was presented as our Ellen. So the people of Middlesbrough kind of took her to, took her to heart. She wasn't from the North East, she was from the North West, but she was our Ellen. And when she uh, previously stood in elections, she'd been a Lancashire lassie. Um, but from Middlesbrough East, the seat that she held from 1924 to 1931, then to Jarrow, 1935 to 1947, the people of the North East took it to heart because she understood the hardships that people were experiencing in the, in the interwar years in the North East and really fought for working class people in areas where either the steel industry or shipbuilding or coal was being devastated by the global economic context. The Jarrow March started in the council chamber in Jarrow. The councillor, the mayor and the councillors, and Ellen Wilkinson had, sent a, had been part of a deputation to see the president of the Board of Trade. And they came back with the rebuttal that they'd received from Walter Runciman. Jarrow must seek its own salvation. And when this was announced and discussed in the council chamber, Somebody from the public gallery apparently said, we should march down with a petition. And it was from that intervention from the people of Jarrow that the Jarrow Crusade was apparently born. And the following October, on the 5th of October, um, there was a massive demonstration in Jarrow that sent off the Jarrow marches and they marched the entire route of what's basically now the a M1 and A1 down to London taking in cathedral cities and um, uh, pit villages and um, industrial towns and um, market towns of the, of the home counties, cutting across the entire um, social and geographical nature of, of England at the time. It was a really important march in terms of really documenting what 
life was like in the 1930s for Jarrah, but also the, the, the inequalities that there were within, within the country. What's really interesting about Ellen Wilkinson is if you um, want to change things um, and you're involved with social movements, lots, lots of the dilemmas, lots of the problems, lots of the um, battles that you have are rehearsals of what's happened before. And if you're involved in social movements in the North East, and you kind of research the past of those social movements, you keep coming across Ellen Wilkinson. So if you attend the Miners' Gala um, and you're a historian, you know of Ellen Wilkinson's interventions in the, in the Miners' Gala. If you're um, uh, an anti-war activist, you know about her activity uh, uh, against um, fascism and war during the 1930s. Um, if you're a campaigner for um, the equality for women, you'll know what she said about wages for housework, and her equal pay strikes um, during the First World War. So anybody who's really engaged in trying to change things um, and is interested in looking at the past of that from a northeast perspective, you keep stumbling across Ellen Wilkinson. This is a bit of a show and tell. So um, what we have, so get this one out of the way first. This is so my biography of Alan Wilkinson, a, re a really enjoyable thing to do, to write the history of Alan Wilkinson, really complex character. Um, and one that, you know, I try to, I try to describe warts and all. You know, it's not simply a question of Alan Wilkinson as this kind of heroic figure. Um, Alan was a real person, and I try to get that across in the book. Um, not only was she a, a parliamentarian and a, a politician, she was also a journalist and a, an author. And one of the things that I tried to do was take her ideas seriously. Um, so I've got a couple of examples of her book. She wrote a couple of novels, but she also wrote a book on, um, on the nature of war under capitalism. Um, she also wrote a, a, a companion book called uh, The Exam of the Nature of Fascism, which is obviously a really crucial question. In the 1930s, she was one of the people who tried to expose the, both the Mussolini and the Hitler regimes for what they were when lots of, lots of people were turning a blind eye. Um, and then perhaps the most famous book that she wrote, real, a real socialist classic, is The Town That Was Murdered, which is about what happens um, to a place that's built on industry where everybody's livelihood depends on a particular company and a particular industry and that, that, that industry is taken away. So this is a classic because this is a, an experience that we're very familiar with, um, not only during the 1930s but also since the, since the 1970s. You know, across the world you have places where the steelworks close or the car, car plant closes and sucked out of those places are all the jobs and all the wealth and, and, and uh, that wealth is moved elsewhere. So Ellen Wilkinson's book, The Town That Was Murdered, is a really powerful and poignant um, insight into that process. I think it's fantastic that there's a play about Ellen Wilkinson. I think people should, people should be aware of their own history. Ellen Wilkinson is part of their history. Um, Ellen Wilkinson is part of your history if you're um, a trade unionist or if you're a campaigner for women's equality or if you're a campaigner against um, imperialism and war. Um, Ellen Wilkinson is a really important part of the, of the uh, historical fabric of the, the North East. So that people get to discuss it in a way that's not just um, a dusty library or an archive that's an accessible way, I think is really fantastic. Um, nobody, nobody wants to read history books <laughs> in the way that they might want to watch a YouTube video or they might want to come to play or see a film. So it's fantastic um, that Ellen Wilkinson is being brought into this public arena.